Hey everyone, my name is Perry, I'm an electrical engineer, and in this video we're going to watch Avatar The Last Airbender to see how accurate all the science and technology in this show really are. This episode is in Book 1, Water, and it is the Northern Air Temple. It is so nostalgic watching this show after so many years. I remember seeing it as a kid, and like now it's on Netflix. I rewatched Legend of Korra recently, but it's super cool to see this again. When it comes to flight of any kind, like gliders or airplanes or even birds flying, there are four fundamental forces that we actually care about, and two of them oppose the other two. There's lift, gravity, thrust, and drag. Gravity, as you know, pulls everything down, and lift pushes things up. Thrust is what moves you forward, and then drag is what pulls you backwards. So when your gravity and your drag are greater than the other two forces, you're not going to fly. It's not going anywhere. But if your lift and your thrust are greater than the forces of gravity and drag put together, you take off. Since these gliders don't have any engines on them, or they don't really have any form of thrust, other than just kind of go gliding through the air, right? The way that they're going to actually achieve lift is a few different methods. One of them is that they later on reveal it in this um, same episode is that there's a bunch of hot air that just keeps escaping from all around the temple and hot air rises. So if you actually catch that bubble of hot air, you can actually achieve a little bit of lift that way. The other design that you have to look at is that the actual shape of the wing. And the shape of airplane wings is based on the shape of bird wings. In that the top of it is kind of curved and the bottom is completely flat. The reason they do that is because the air flowing over the top of the wing is way faster than the air flowing under the bottom of the wing and this helps to achieve lift. There are a few other ways to do this and specifically for what we're seeing here because they're right up, upside against a mountain. What another way of doing it is I think it's called like mountain lift or wave lift. There's a bunch of different words for it. But what's going to happen is when wind actually hits that mountain, the wind is going to hit it and then move up. Which is another way that you can actually glide through the air and not just fall all the way down. Though hot air rises, it doesn't actually do that forever. As the hot air begins to rise, it'll actually cool down really quick. So you can't just ride that one bubble of hot air forever. You have to actually constantly find hot air pockets around this temple so you can actually lift and you can continue gliding. Otherwise, you're just in free fall. It also helps that they're falling from a higher elevation. That way they can actually catch the pockets of air. Like, it's going to be near impossible. In fact, I have no idea without Aang airbending. If these guys are just on, like, surface ground, they wouldn't just lift up off the air. They have to fly off of a high elevation, and then to maintain that elevation, they have to get those little pockets of hot air, or they can, like, catch the, um, like, I think it's hill lift or... Wait, it's going to bother me that I can't think of what the name is. But they're going to catch that air hitting the mountain and rising up. So there's going to be little like places where you can like dip down and go like in sort of, sort of like a sine wave motion. And you can glide successfully around this air temple. Wow! Yeah, my dad is the mastermind behind this whole place. Everything's powered by hot air. It even pumps hot air currents outside to give us a lift when we're gliding. This place is unbelievable. Yeah, it's great, isn't it? No, just unbelievable. So that was the part where they just confirmed that this place actually does blow out hot air pockets on the outside, which is how the gliders are able to achieve lift after they've kind of glided for a little bit. I'm imagining if I walked into a Hindu temple and I saw a bunch of pipes and machinery and technology everywhere, how would that make me feel? And it's... Really weird because, well, I don't know about weird, it's interesting because something about it is that watching this exact episode, I remember watching it as a kid when it aired, and back as a kid, I was like, yo, this is awesome, right? Like, at least someone's using this temple for something. Like, it's just sat there for a hundred years. Like, at least we're actually doing something with it. But, like, now that I'm older, because, like, now I, I, I am both a Hindu and an engineer, so this is kind of like if I walk into, like, a temple in a place of, like, teaching and worship, and I see all of this, Age has affected me a little bit. I'm kind of like, man, I wish they didn't do that as much. But I think progress is something that's inevitable. You can't stop people from wanting to do more and learn about the world around them and expand upon it. With what I'm seeing right now, I I can't blame them, right? Like, it, it, 
to give my younger self credit, that is a temple that has been abandoned for a hundred years and, and no one lived there. It has served little to no purpose. The fact that it's actually maintained its structure in that well is pretty good. And at least they're using it for something productive and people can live there and as much as I, I don't like to say it, but I, I would have done the same thing. Cover your nose and hold your breath. Okay, so you brought me all the way down here to see an empty room. Wrong. It's filled to the brim with natural gas. Came across it my first time here. Natural gas almost never builds up just in like one confined area like that. And that's because gas will naturally diffuse and reach an equilibrium with its environment. So to have like large pockets of natural, like, flammable natural gas like this is highly unlikely. And the other thing that I've just noticed, and this is being extremely nitpicky, but the guy did say like hold your nose and or like close your nose and hold your breath. And like when you do that, Sokka just sounded normal. But if you actually were to do that, then you sound like this. Like you wouldn't actually sound the same way as if you weren't holding your nose. Natural gas generally gets to us in the form of shale, which is S-H-A-L-E, and that's a form of rock. And then what you do is like, you just force water and chemicals and sand and just pretty much destroy that rock as much as you can. And then when you actually deform it, it'll release that natural gas, which is what we use as energy. But just having a room full of it is highly unlikely and very abnormal. A lid is actually the answer. If you control the hot air, you control the war balloon. Hmm, that's actually pretty smart. Well, there's no denying that uh, that's how hot air balloons work. <laughs> and I, I think at this point, we haven't actually seen any... Like, yeah, gliders don't really have much range because you have to depend on so many like of the air currents around you. But if you have a constant source of fire and you have like a large enough volume, like a balloon in which, in which the hot air can occupy, then yeah, it'll... It'll lift you up. It'll take you wherever you want to go. There was a point in time where everybody was like, hey, we're going to have a bunch of these just flying all over the city and like pretty much acting as like kind of cheap helicopters in a sense, right? And the idea was to call them blimps. And the reason that we don't have those today really goes back to this thing called the Hindenburg. Yeah, that was awful. That was like one of the, like I think the, the Hindenburg is like literally a disaster that people use to reference. It's like, well, at least it's not as bad as the Hindenburg. Like it's, it's a giant airship and a blimp, whatever you want to call it. And on May 6th, 1937, it just crashed. Like it just burned up, destroyed itself. I think there was less than 50 people actually on there, I think, and most of them died. But it's, that's part of the reason, like the, 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 that's not the, the funny part, it, it's just, you can't, like, there's only so far you can take an engineering concept before you just get ridiculous with it. And one of them was, like, filling a giant balloon with air, just kind of, like, going all around New York City. I think it actually crashed in New Jersey. And, it, like, th this idea seemed really good at the time, but um, we don't always have the best ideas. Guess what? The Gold Life is now an affiliate partner of NordVPN. Information is a huge commodity nowadays. Companies want to know where you live, where your cars park, what you eat, where you work, where you work out, the passwords you have, the websites you're on. Your personal information is being bought and sold by these giant tech companies without your permission. Protect yourself at all times on up to six devices using NordVPN. I have it on my laptop and my phone. That way whenever I go connect to a public Wi-Fi anywhere, I don't have to worry about a thing. Another cool deal is that you get to connect to other countries and get access to their Netflix movies and TV shows, giving you a whole new array of entertainment so you can binge even harder. Use my link in the description down below to get 68% off a two-year plan of NordVPN with a 30-day money-back guarantee. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you want to see more Last Airbender, go ahead and put in the comments like what episode or what technology you want me to react to, and I'll get to it as soon as I can. Thank you all so much for watching, stay fresh, and stay golden.